So exercise is consistently recommended within international clinical guidelines for osteoarthritis. Some guidelines go as far to say that exercise should be recommended for every patient with osteoarthritis, and that's irrespective of their age, their severity of their OA, and the presence or not of any comorbidities. There's now over 100 randomised controlled trials and also lots of systematic reviews that support the role of exercise. They show it can reduce pain and improve physical function among people with knee and hip OA. But this evidence also consistently shows that the magnitude of benefits are small to moderate and also the effects can reduce over time. And there could be a number of different reasons for this small, short lasting benefit that we see from exercise. One hypothesis could be that not everybody responds to exercise. And supporting this hypothesis, when we look at different examples of exercise programmes, we can see that approximately 50% of people are classed as a treatment responder, according to the OMRAC Dorsey Responder Criteria and 50% of people aren't classed as treatment responders. So if we can better match the right exercise programme to the right group of people, it could lead to improved treatment effects and it could also lead to more efficient use of healthcare services. But for a targeted exercise approach to exercise to be successful, we need to identify subgroups of people or moderators who genuinely respond to exercise more than others. So in the literature to date, there's been a range of potential moderators that have been explored. Uh, for example, pain, outcome expectations, anxiety and depression. But this research has been exploratory. So we don't know for certain whether these characteristics genuinely moderate the effect of exercise or not. Thank you very much, Mel, for that introduction. Um, next to the hypothesis that Mel introduced, I think there might be a, a second hypothesis um, why we see limited effects of exercise in osteoarthritis, which mean, might be that there is a um, suboptimal content of the exercise therapy. So we know exercise therapy could lead to a reduction in pain and improve physical function, but like the black box shows here in the center of your screen, we don't know why or how exercise leads to these outcomes. And without knowing how it works, we probably um, are not able to uh, have the, the optimal content of exercise therapy to have the optimal effects on uh, pain and function. And uh, that's a reason for our second aim in this project. Let me get to the next slide, which is the mediation analysis. This is a scheme of what we think might also be uh, reasonable for uh, exercise therapy in osteoarthritis. So there is a direct effect, meaning the, the, the horizontal arrow going from left to right of exercise therapy on pain and function. But we think that um, some mediator or mediators actually ex explain this effect. And um, by doing mediation analysis, we hope to find some of these key elements of exercise therapy, which explain why we see an effect of pain and function after exercise therapy. So what are potential mediators? Again, from the literature, we did a, a systematic search uh, and published that in, uh, back in 2015 to see what factors actually change along with a effect of on pain and function in people with osteoarthritis or the knee of the hip. And uh, from doing th this literature search, we identified a few potential moderate mediators uh, that actually showed significant effect in most of the trials showing an effect of in pain and function. So for knee osteoarthritis, we saw that a muscle strength, proprioception and the range of movement of the knee joint actually improved in most of the trials that showed an effect in pain and function and therefore might be a mediator of the effect. And for hip osteoarthritis, we saw that muscle strength in most trials uh, so show, showed a significant increase. So therefore these are labeled as potential mediators from the literature and uh, were the basis for our study in this IPD analysis. But um, this is all um, exploratory. 
and all indirect evidence. So uh, that's why we actually started this uh, IPD uh, initiative. Thanks, Jos. So to be able to identify true moderators and mediators, we need to analyze individual participant level data. And we can do this through an individual participant data or IPD for short, an IPD meta-analysis. So what is a, an IPD meta-analysis? Well, like a traditional meta-analysis, you set your question, you complete a systematic review to identify relevant studies to include. But unlike the traditional approach, you need data from every participant that took part in each one of the studies. And that data isn't available in published reports. So you therefore need to contact the study team to obtain their original data set, which is the IPD. And that enables you to obtain meta-analysis results for specific subgroups and to be able to assess differential treatment effects. So it increases the power to be able to identify the moderators and the mediators, and it's therefore seen as the gold standard approach. So that brings us on to the aims of our study. Uh, we wanted to establish a database of IPD from randomised controlled trials of exercise for people with knee and hip osteoarthritis. We wanted to identify moderators of the effect of exercise on both pain and physical function with people with knee and hip OA at three, six and 12 months, so in the short, medium and long term. And we also wanted to identify mediators of the effect of exercise on pain and physical function in individuals with knee and hip OA. And just for time today, just for objective A, I'm going to be focusing on pain at three months, so short-term data only. So in terms of our methods, we updated a previous systematic review to identify randomised controlled trials that compared exercise to a non-exercise control among adults with knee and hip away. We ran electronic searches in several databases and we double screened titles, abstracts and full texts to identify relevant trials. We double data extracted some data that we needed from the reports and we completed risk of bias assessment using the, the Cochrane risk of bias tool. And then we collected IPD in collaboration with the OA Trial Bank. And the OA Trial Bank was an initiative that was established back in 2011 to collect and store IPD from research of, from osteoarthritis trials. We then identified our potential moderators and mediators of interest. So moderators were identified through a moderator ranking exercise that we completed with our collaborators. So we asked collaborators to propose all potentially important moderators that were then ranked for importance. And the ones that were ranked as the most important and that were measured in the included trials were included in our analysis. And mediators were those that Jos previously identified in his systematic review. So the analysis for objective A, the um, identifying treatment effect moderators, we did what's called a two-stage IPD meta-analysis. So in stage one, we obtained estimates of the treatment effect and the potential moderator interaction from each trial individually. In stage two, those trial specific results were then synthesized in a meta analysis model. And then that produced a summary estimate of the treatment effect and potential moderator interaction. The analysis was run modeling a non linear relationship between potential moderators and exercise. And all analyses were on an intention to treat principle with all estimates reported with 95% confidence intervals. So for objective B, uh, we had a one-stage IPD mating analysis uh, after collecting all the IPD. Uh, we first obtained estimates of the treatment effect on uh, every individual uh, mediator and of course on the outcomes being pain and function. And in the next step, we uh, obtained the estimates of the me effect of the mediator on the outcome. And in the end, uh, we uh, calculated the percentage mediated by the individual mediator to have an uh, ID on the strength of the indirect effect of that certain mediator. Uh, 
Um, we did that using linear regression analy analysis adjusted for uh, a couple of confounders um, and with radiographic severity only available in the trials measuring proprioception, but I'll come back to that later. Um, but given the time, we uh, direct, kindly direct you to the published protocol if you want to see more of the details of all the analysis of all objectives within this project. So just for the initial results from the IPD meta-analysis, so altogether we identified 92 trials that uh, met our inclusion and exclusion criteria, so the trials of exercise compared to a non-exercise control. So we attempted to contact those 92 trial leads and ask them to send us their um, original data set. So 39 of those trial leads agreed and we had a data sharing agreement in place. We um, didn't obtain 53 trial data sets. The majority of reasons for that was that because we just simply weren't able to contact the trial leads. In 14 cases, we did manage to make contact, but unfortunately communication didn't result in shared data. Nine trial leads said that they were unable to locate their IPD and no one actually declined. So, Although we had 39 data sharing agreements in place, we actually included 31 data sets in the analysis. So six data sets were delivered, but unfortunately they weren't able to be used. For example, variables that were labeled um, in the data set were unclear, so we weren't able to use them. And in two instances, even though we had a data sharing agreement in place, that didn't then result in us being um, the data being delivered. So altogether, we had approximately 4,500 participants to include in our analysis. Just to give you a flavour of the included trials, there were predominantly um, included participants with, with knee osteoarthritis, and the exercise interventions tested were heterogeneous in terms of different types of exercise te tested of varying durations, the exercise was completed at home or in clinics under direct supervision. But exercise was predominantly of moderate intensity and low impact. The non-exercise controls included in the, in the trials were education alone, usual family doctor care, or a waiting list or no treatment. And the risk of bias of included trials was variable. So just looking at the specific results for objective A, the treatment effect moderators. So firstly, looking at baseline pain severity as a potential moderator of the effect of exercise on pain at three months. So just focusing on pain at the short term follow up time point only. And just take a minute to have a look at the graph. So the blue line shows the additional treatment effect of exercise for people with different levels of baseline pain severity. And that's compared to someone with a baseline pain score of zero, so somebody that had no pain. So the dotted lines show the upper and lower 95% confidence intervals, meaning that we can be 95% confident that the true value lines between these lines. And if the confidence interval doesn't cross zero, it shows a statistically significant finding. So from the graph, because the confidence interval doesn't cross zero, we can see that baseline pain severity does moderate the effect of exercise compared to a non-exercise control on pain at the short-term follow-up time point. And we can see that those with pain severity of 40 out of 100 or higher seem to have the greatest benefits in terms of pain reduction. So secondly, looking at baseline physical function as a potential moderator of the effect of exercise, again focusing on pain at short term three month follow up only. So similar to the previous graph, the blue line shows the additional treatment effect of exercise for people with different levels of baseline physical function. And again, that's compared to someone with a baseline physical function score of zero. So i.e. if someone had, who had no physical function limitations. And again, the dotted lines show the upper and the lower confidence intervals. And so from the graph, we can see that the baseline level of physical function does moderate the effect of exercise compared to a non-exercise control at short-term pain follow-up. And again, it seems that those with a physical function limitation of 40 out of 100 or higher have the greatest benefits from exercise in terms of pain reduction.
Looking at the other mo moderators, there was no evidence that any of the other characteristics we investigated moderated the effect of exercise on pain at three months. So that included age, mental well-being, number of comorbidities, duration of symptoms, strength, physical activity, education, arthritis self-efficacy and radiographic OA severity. Thank you very much, Mel. Uh, on with the effects of the, media, the mediation analysis. Again, this is our model that we've tested uh, and um, we, we selected the mediators for which we uh, think there is an effect of exercise on the actual mediator. Uh, we know overall there is an effect of exercise on pain and function, but it's that question mark whether there's actually an effect of the mediator on the pain and function. Um, and that's what we try to answer with this uh, analysis. And um, starting with muscle strength for knee osteoarthritis, we had 11 trials uh, with IPD available over 1100 participants um, with I think a general um, generalizable uh, group of uh, patients uh, with osteoarthritis of the knee. And um, from this data, we can confirm there is a statistically significant effect of the exercise therapy on knee extensor, extensor strength in this case, um, with a uh, average increase of 8% after the intervention. Um, in this data as well, we confirmed there is a statistically significant effect of that change in knee strength, knee extensor strength after the exercise therapy on pain and function, but it's only a very small effect. So if we calculate the percentage mediated, it was only 2%. So only 2% of the overall effect on pain and function due to the exercise therapy could be explained by the increase of knee extensor strength within this data set, which means that we have another 98% of the effect that is not explained um, by knee extensor strength. So that's um, definitely uh, a lot of effects still to be unraveled uh, from exercise therapy um, in this case. Um, we had some other potential mediators, uh, far, far less cases available, IPD available for these. We had a few trials measuring proprioception, uh, only one trial with 70 uh, patients measuring range of motion in knee osteoarthritis patients, and a few trials measuring muscle strength in hip osteoarthritis patients. But within this data, for all of these mediators, there was no significant effect of exercise on this mediator. And with that, it's impossible to have a mediating effect overall. So within the data we uh, obtained in this project, there were no significant effect on these mediators. mediators and so no uh, possible effect uh, on the pain of function coming from these media mediators. So that brings me to our key messages. Um, we showed that pain severity and level of physical, physical function moderated the effect of exercise compared to non-exercise controls. Um, in those with pain and function limitations of a score 40 out of 100 or higher, showing the greatest improvement in pain and uh, on the short term that is. And for the mediators, the key message is that despite a significant effect of exercise therapy on the knee extensor strength and a significant effect of exercise uh, of knee extensor strength on pain and disability, the change of this mediator only explained 2% of the total effect. Some strength and limitations. Um, IPD meta-analysis is the gold standard approach to determine uh, the effects of moderators and mediators. Um, it was a very extensive uh, exercise to get this data. It took us more than three and a half years to run this project, but still, we, uh, as Mel showed, we didn't obtain all available IPD in this project. And there is a lot of heterogeneity in the exercise interventions that are included. Uh, for now, we didn't have the time yet to, um, to look at different kinds of in, uh, exercise inter interventions uh, and more in detailed analysis. That's all to come. Uh, and of course, we also limited by uh, the fact that no, not all moderators or mediators of interest were actually measured in the included RCTs. So to conclude, um, we've provided strong evidence of a differential response to exercise, meaning that pain and physical function moderated the effect of exercise with, like we said, an uh, increased effect in those scoring 40 or higher on a scale from zero to 100. 
Um, based on the mediation analysis, we need to conclude that a large part of the benefits of exercise therapy for knee osteoarthritis were not explained by knee, an increase in knee extensor strength. And like I said, there are ongoing uh, future analysis are required to fully understand uh, all these uh, effects and potential moderators and mediators. Thank you.